The neuromuscular system is, in essence, the nervous system and the muscular system put together. So what we're going to do is build a foundation of knowledge of the neuromuscular system, and uh, we're going to be look, uh, learning four different points, which is the basic structure of the uh, neuromuscular system, the basic function of the neuromuscular system, the role of a motor unit, and the role of strength and stability. So what is the the outcome uh, with regards to strength and stability. The neuromuscular system, as I've mentioned, is the relationship between muscles and nerves or the muscular system and the nervous system. Um, obviously, our particular focus is with regards to movement, exercise, biomechanics, uh, and even rehabilitation, which we will come to obviously later on. Um, we're going to be focusing on two muscle proprioceptors. They are essentially two small sensors that provide feedback and respond to changes within the muscle. So muscle spindles are located deep within the muscle fibers and they are small sensory unit that wrap tightly around the muscle fibers. Now they detect changes in length. So as the muscle gets longer and shorter, as it lengthens and contracts. Then we've got Golgi tendon organs these are sensors located in the tendons and they detect changes in tension. So as tension builds within the muscle and around the muscle, they will, if it gets, um, if it gets too tense, it will tell the nervous system to relax and turn off the contraction. This one, if it gets too long, it will tell, again, it will tell the muscle to contract to get shorter. So they are basically um, stopping, in some respects, they're stopping the muscle from injuring itself uh, or you injuring yourself, um, but also they are there to aid movement, movement, uh, moving, movement, exercise, so on and so forth. So, quickly on the uh, muscle spindles. So, located deep within the muscle fibres. So you'll recognise this drawing, hopefully. So that is the muscle that we've talked about with the fascicles inside it. And then we come off there. Then we've got the muscle fiber there. And then obviously the myofibril comes within that. So these muscle spindles, they come from the muscle fiber. They weave their way out of the entire muscle up to the CNS which is where we see this diagram. So it comes up the sensory nerve. So once it's detected that the muscle's getting too long, so you're overstretching the muscle, it will send a signal back to the nervous system. It will interpret that as a problem because it's getting too long and it needs to be shortened. So it will then send a signal back to the nervous system to contract. So an easy way to understand this is either um, uh, sort of a, a, like a jumping press up or a jump of any kind. Because what will happen is as the mu muscle lengthens, as your either hands hit the floor or feet hit the floor, they will lengthen and then they will snap back to give it that el elasticity. So the resulting contraction depends on the degree of muscle lengthening, which basically means the faster the lengthening, the faster the contraction, or the slower the lengthening, the slower the contraction. And this is known as the stretch reflex. So when you are, it could even be running, when your foot hits the floor and your calf lengthens, it will get to a certain length, and if it does that fast, it will snap back fast. So when we talked about, again, in the, in the muscular system, the, the elasticity of a muscle, it's that sort of uh, coming into real life. So when we run or we jump or we do a jumping push-up, if we take the push-up, as our hands hit the floor and our chest goes towards the floor, our chest muscle and triceps are lengthening. Eventually, it will get long enough and then it will act like a spring and spring back. And that is essentially what the stretch reflex is. So when we talk about exercise, that would be plyometric training. If we take about, if we talk about um, a squat, so this is a slightly slower contraction. So it will, we will go down into the squat. Quads will lengthen, glutes will lengthen, 
uh, to some respects, the hamstrings will lengthen as well. Again, it will get to a certain point, and then the muscles will um, use that stretching of the muscle to then, in a sense, shorten and contract the muscle. So there's not only an active contraction of the muscle from the actin and the myosin, there is a spring-like um, Part, there is a spring-like part to our movement as well in the fact that it acts like a spring and that it pulls apart and then springs back together. And that is essentially what is known as the stretch-free reflex. So as I mentioned, the resulting contraction depends on the degree of muscle lengthening, which basically means the faster the lengthening of... Uh, sorry, the faster the lengthening, the faster the contraction. The slower the lengthening, the slower the contraction. Okay? So there is a natural shortening to the muscle by the sarcomere but there is also a neuromuscular response via the uh, muscle spindles to say I am now too long I am going to uh, contract back now so those are the uh, muscle spindles now as I mentioned there are also Golgi tendon organs located in the tendon which is down here and would also be up here as well now they are detecting changes in tension within the tendon. So if we are, again, going into a, um, a heavy squat, so again, it's very heavy, the, the, the weight's very heavy, it's going to pick up on that tension within the tendon. So before it rips away from the bone because it's so heavy, there is like a trip switch, so just like your house, if there's too much electricity going into the house or into a certain appliance, it will flip a switch and it will stop the uh, the electricity going in and it will trip that, either the whole house out or it will trip that, um, that uh, cooker or microwave or whatever appliance is um, getting too much electricity and it will trip it out and it will automatically turn off. That's what our muscle has. So if we are doing strength training, we pick up a weight, we get down into the squat and we can't get back up, that is the Golgi tendon organ shutting down the muscle. So we have to understand it from that perspective because what we can then do is when we talk about strength training, it's not necessarily, uh, or there are two parts to it. It's not only getting the muscle stronger, but it is also overriding the trip switch to help the uh, Golgi tendons realize that the muscle can take more um, more tension than you are giving it. But there is a training aspect to that because you need to train it to be able to get the structure strong enough. And then what we can do is um, use the, the, the training to be able to override the, the way that the Golgi tendon organs work because there is more strength within a muscle than the Golgi tendons uh, Golgi tendon organs will allow us to use and I'll explain that um, further on in this tutorial. Now we're going to look at what a motor unit is and it's a nerve and the muscle fibers that it connects to via what's called a neuromuscular junction. So if I just quickly draw the image from the last slide, so that's the uh, two bones of the arm, then we've got the bicep which comes through there, and then we had the Golgi tendon organ which goes up to the central nervous system, then we had the muscle spindle go up to the central nervous system. Now these are the sensory nerves, then we have the interpretation that goes on up here, and then we have the motor nerves. So this is essentially what the motor unit is. So it's that motor nerve that joins onto the muscle fiber via the neuromuscular junction. So here it is. So you've got the body of or the cell body here. You've got the axon that comes down here. This is the muscle fiber that it's joining onto. Now, the neuromuscular junction is essentially, so you've got the muscle fibre, which is there, and then you've got the nerve, or the motor nerve, that comes down there. In fact, what that should really look like is that. 
And that there, that gap, is the neuromuscular junction. So you have a bunch of chemicals. We're not going to talk about this in, um, in this tutorial, but you get a bunch of chemicals in this area. So it sends an electrical signal down. There's a bunch of chemicals. They cross the junction, so they go from there to there, and then those chemical reactions take place. And then the, um, if I just quickly draw the sarcomere with the actin and the myosin, when that floods into there, you then get your contraction. So it contracts towards each other. That's a very simplified way of looking at it. But that's essentially what a motor unit is. It's this nerve, that junction, and the muscle fiber that it's connecting to. So, motor neuron. Motor neurons are only uh, central neurons with axons that leave the central nervous system to innovate neural tissues. So that's what I've just described. So here is the, the motor neuron that comes all the way down and attaches to here. And the whole unit is known as a motor unit. Now, there are two of them. We've got alpha motor neurons. Now, they have extensive dendric trees up here, as you can see, extensive dendric trees, which come off here, uh, that receive input. They're myelinated axons, which you can see here. So these are all myelinated axons. So again, we talked about that in the nervous system. They have large diameters, so they, conduct, they can, can, can conduct impulses faster. So these ones are the ones that deal a lot with gross motor uh, or muscle fiber contraction or motor unit uh, recruitment. So these would be described as like force, oh, if I could write, force generators, um, or let's just say movement generators or strength, for example. So that's what we could liken them to. What we then have are gamma motor neurons. Um, and what I should say as well is these are more on the, like the superficial parts of the muscle, which are the ones closer to the edge. That doesn't mean they're all on the edge, but they're closer to the edge. What we then have are gamma motor neurons. Now these are a little bit deeper. Now they innovate intramural muscle fibers, which are components of muscle spindles that we've talked about. Now, these are more involved in posture. So just keeping the body upright, finding uh, tightness in muscles or slackness in muscles will be due to these gamma motor neurons. So where we have um, mo a motor unit as a whole, we have the motor neuron, it then breaks into two, which are the alphas, which are force movement and strength, for example, and then we have gammas, which are um, uh, more to do with posture and more components of these muscle spindles that we've talked about. So we've got the motor neurons going in. Some of them deal with force. Some of them deal with posture. And as I've mentioned, the motor unit is the entire unit, so the nerve and um, and the muscle. What we're now going to go and look at is motor unit recruitment.